All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be walking through connecting to Neo4j. And so um, if you are here, if you could just drop a note in the chat and let me know. I'm going to give everybody a couple of minutes to hop on. So hopefully we won't leave anyone behind. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Anyone else? All righty. Okay. So as I said, this is Allison Cosette. I am your host today. What we're going to be doing now is we're going to be working through connecting to Neo4j. This is in support of our um, of our topics in graph data science series and the introduction to the workshop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through the actual connection steps. Many folks are going to be watching this after the fact. So if you have any questions, you can always feel free to reach out to me at either my LinkedIn or via email. So let's get started. The first thing that you need to do is go ahead and create a Neo4j account. There's a couple of ways that we can get to this connection screen. The first is if you go to neo4j.com. So neo4j.com. When you come to neo4j.com, you're going to see a couple of different places where you have a get started screen. Down on the bottom left, we see start free for developers, start free for data scientists. What I'm gonna have us do is in the upper right hand side, you're, I'm going, you're going to see a blue button that says get started. So on the upper hand, right hand side, you're gonna see get started. And let's scroll down to Neo4j Aura DB. So on neo4j.com, the upper right hand corner, get started. And then you're going to see Neo4j Aura DB. So the Neo4j Aura DB, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what that is. And here we're going to click on Get Started again. Um, what Neo4j actually is, is we are a graph database. So in this case, what we're getting you to is we're getting you to um, where you can actually have your own Neo4j database. So this free tier is open to you. There is a slight limitation on the number of nodes as well as the number of relationships but we just want you to have a full instance that you can play with. As we work through the series, you're going to see that we do have a number of other um, opportunities available as far as leveraging the sandbox and different things like that. But for right now, um, I just want you to just get started with the, your first instance. So as I said, we'd go to neo4j.com, get started, get started. And you're going to see this screen here, which is create your account and you're gonna walk through those steps of creating your account. If you're watching this a little bit later, I suggest you pause the video here and get to the point where you click on creating your account. Once you create your account and you see this screen, you can start the video again. All right, so at this point you've created your account. Now what we need to do is we need to actually create an instance. On this page, you're going to see a number of different options. Some of these instances actually have preloaded data. For example, we have a movies, one that has movies in it. There's a graph database recommendations, graphs for cybersecurity, et cetera. For the purposes of this week's community detection, we're going to start with just a blank instance uh, or a start here instance. And it's going to offer you the opportunity, if you would like, to go through a couple of different options in the learning. So you can just start here. One of the next things that is going to happen is you are going to see instance credentials. You'll see an instant cr instance credentials. By default, the instance will be named instance 01 
we will give you a generated password. As it says, we do strongly advise changing this initial password. And you'll see to the right, right here, there's a download button. When you download the, those credentials, it's going to keep them on your local. And what it's going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to have um, a note, like you can open it in Notepad, and it'll have some information about your username, the database name, et cetera. So we definitely suggest that you download these credentials because we're going to be using them. And then also just make sure that you change your password as necessary. At this point, once you click on download and then continue, you're going to see a quick start introductory courses. So we are going to be going through some workshops. If you're watching this offline, I definitely suggest that you um, take a look at some of these. So in here, we cover the four main areas. One is Neo4j fundamentals. So really understanding what is a graph database and what are the actual properties of a graph model. We talked about those a little bit in Why Graph, an introduction to graph for data science, but this will really give you an opportunity to work with them and get your hands dirty. I do want to show you also um, cyber fun Cypher Fundamentals. So Cypher is the actual query language that we use when we are querying the database. The great thing about it is I believe it's highly intuitive. If you're already familiar with SQL or SQL, there are going to be some similar vernacular, such as a, a where statement and things like that. But it is unique to graph because the nature of the graph database is different. So we're actually querying relationships. Data modeling fundamentals will walk you through understanding how you actually set up the nodes as well as their relationships and have those optimized for your particular um, occurrence and your data that you're working with. And then the last is importing CSV data. Many of us, our data is already living somewhere in a CSV. And so this is going to walk you through how you actually get those CSVs into your graph database. Um, the other thing is if you go to um, the Graph Academy. So it's graphacademy.neo4j.com. You're going to see those four courses that we just mentioned in the beginner's track. So what we suggest is that if you go through these four courses, you will have all of the basics that you need to play around with what you're working on. At that point, we have some additional curated paths. If you want to dive deeper into queries, there is a cipher path. And then many of you will likely be going on our data scientist path here, which has um, introduction to graph data science, and we'll be moving forward from there. The workshop series does cover some of those, but it's just small bits and pieces of different pieces of these courses. And what I really want to point out is that the certification to the Neo4j graph data science certification is completely free. So once you go through all the coursework, if you'd like to take the exam to become certified, that is a free course. So just wanted to point out these learning pieces that are available to you from Neo4j. In our piece right now, we're actually going to click on open instance. So once you click on open instance, this here will probably say it takes a few minutes to get started and set up. And what you're going to see eventually is you are now in the Neo4j Aura dashboard. The Aura dashboard is going to show you all of your databases and your instances that you currently have running. Your free trial in AuraDB includes one free instance. You can destroy that instance and create another instance. You can actually, we'll talk a little bit in our live workshops about actually using the sandbox. I'll probably do a separate sandbox workshop so that you can play around as well. But what this will allow you to do is this will allow you to set up your own instance that has your own graph data. So if you have something from a work project or a Kaggle project that you want to work on, you'll be able to do that here.
Um, as I mentioned, this is prep for one of the other workshops that you're going to be joining us for. So in that case, um, you know, if you have your own instance set up and it's in or a DB, you may want to potentially create like you can dump that and hold on to it and then we can run it here or you can run through the sandbox. So we'll talk about that as well. But right now what you're going to see is you'll see some basic information about the instance. Because the instance currently is empty, we haven't put anything in it. When you see the number of nodes and the number of relationships, they're going to be zero. You can also see that we have a limit of 200,000 nodes and 400,000 relationships within this free tier. And the last piece that you see here is the connection URI. I've blown it up a little bit bigger because we're going to be using it momentarily. This little clipboard next to this URI is going to be used when we're actually connecting via Python. So as of right now, what you want to be clear on is that this is your Neo4j or a dashboard. It will highlight, you can look at your instances, and then you can create a new instance if you would like. The, the other thing to know is if you would like to create, say, an Aura DS instance, if you would like to create an additional instance, you can um, get those started. And it's a very modest price to start. So if you want to look into those, you can. They started, you know, they're depending on the size you need, but it's, it's very modest to start. So that's something that you could also look into if you want multiple instances. So this shows you our Aura dashboard. The next thing we're going to do now is we are going to go ahead and connect to Python. And I've got a Google Colab set up for everyone. I'm going to take this and I'm going to drop it in the comments. And by dropping in the comments, you'll be able to see this either on LinkedIn or if you're watching the webinar later. So that link is going to be the link to your Google Colab where you can actually run that Python connection. Whether you're in Google, whether you download this from Google Colab to run in your local Jupyter, or if you're running it in Colab, either way, you're going to want to make sure that you have Neo4j installed. So you can see here we have a pip install Neo4j. So I'm just going to run that so that you can see that run. It shouldn't take too long as with any library that we're running. The next thing as that's running and that wheel file is loading, there's two things that I want to point out. In testing our connection, there are two elements we need. One is the password and one is the URI. So if I go back into my actual instance, and I click on the clipboard next to the instance, that's going to automatically copy the URI. So you go back to your console, your Neo4j or a console, go into the instance you'd like to connect to, and under connection URI, which is the last element inside this instance dashboard, you're gonna click on copy. Once you have copied that URI, I'm gonna have you come into page the the Google Colab, and we are going to go ahead and paste that here. You see that it is not set as a string, so you're definitely going to want to make sure that you turn the URI into a string. So let's go ahead and do that. And then the other element is you're going to need the password from your instance credentials. So as I mentioned, we have instance credentials. I have mine downloaded and saved. And so here, you just want to make sure that you're pulling in the right. So if you have a number of different um, instances, you definitely want to make sure that you have the correct instance. OK, so I'm going to go through and pull in my password that I have. Let me see, is this my Let me make sure I have the appropriate one for me. Let's see here. I'm going to go into my credentials. All right. So if you open up credentials, it's a .env, but if you need to look at it in Notepad or something, you can do that as well. So now what I've done is I've gone through and I've copied in my password. And again, 
I will be changing this, but you want to make sure that you put it in as a string, as a string. Obviously, you know, there are certainly more secure ways. I'm about to destroy this instance, um, so it will not exist any longer. You know, leveraging them from config files, um, secret secret keys, et cetera. There's a number of ways you can do that a little more securely. But for the purposes here of this demonstration, I just want to show you what this would look like. The rest of this code here, um, I'm going to walk you through. But the only purpose of this particular notebook is to test this connection. So the first thing that we're going to see is that we are actually from Neo4j importing graph database. There are a number of libraries from Neo4j that we're going to be using going forward, but today we're just connecting to the database. You'll see that when creating the driver from graph database.driver, we're pulling in the URI uh, as well as this is the actual name of the password. So when you originally logged in, that's the name of the database. Sorry, the name of the password, the name of the database for authorization and then the actual password. I've given you a couple of quick uh, cipher queries here um, and actions that do different things for you. So in this case, we're actually going to be creating, we're going to be adding friends. So we're going to be adding a person's name and then we are going to be merging them and connecting them with other friends that we're we're creating, and then we're going to print all of those out. So in here within the driver session, we're going to add a friend, Arthur, who has a relationship. He's a friend of Guinevere. Arthur is also a friend of Lancelot. Arthur is also a friend of Merlin. And then we're going to do a read. So in execute underscore write for the session, we're actually writing to the database. OK, you're writing to your Aura instance. So once I run this, unless you see any errors, this means that this has actually connected to your Aura DB instance. It has created these people as well as their relationships. And we know that that worked because we're looking at the read of the um, of the file here. So this is printing out Arthur's friends. The way that another way that you can take a quick peek is that now when I go back to my Aura instance, you clearly see here that we have four nodes, which are the entities we just created, as well as three relationships. So those three relationships are the friend of Arthur to Guinevere, Arthur to Lancelot, Arthur to Merlin. And then we printed those out, but we clearly see that we have each of those four as well as Arthur, which is why we have four nodes and three relationships. I'm not going to get deep into um, exploring these. We're going to do that in our next workshop, but I just wanted to make it clear to you that these are the, the steps. So as long as that has gone well, you should be all set. If you have any questions or need anything, please reach out to me and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much and have a great day. Welcome aboard.